all know that the only way to improve playing the saxophone or any other instrument, or really anything, is by putting in the work, practice. But everyone is busy. We all have so much going on. There's work, family, running errands, and of course, keeping up with the Great British Bake Off. Don't judge me. One of the topics that come up all of the time in sax school is how to find the time to practice and how to make that time count. So if you're interested in getting some tips to help you organize and elevate your practice routine, stick around. G'day, it's Nigel here. I just wanted to interrupt super quick to say hi, and just to say I hope you really enjoy this session with Fred on practicing. Of course, he knows a load about practicing techniques from his decades of touring with the iconic Average White Band. And I just wanted to say that this session here is just a snippet from the full masterclass that Fred did on practice techniques for our members inside Sax School. If you're curious to see the whole session and also to see how we're helping thousands of sax players just like you every single day, well, we'll put a link to the 14-day free trial down below so you can go and check out if you if you're interested. Okay, right, let's get stuck in. Enough from me. Here's Fred. We're going to talk about some of the strategies I've learned over the million years that I've been playing the saxophone. I spent many wasted hours in practice rooms practicing the wrong stuff or practicing the right stuff in the wrong way. So I'd like to share with you some of the things I wish I'd known about practicing when I started. Some of these tips are things you already know because they're just common sense, but sometimes you need to hear someone else say them before they'll sink in. So. I'm here to say them. Here we go. The most important things, if you want to be successful when it comes to practicing, are clear, achievable goals. Like the saying goes, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. So having goals is number one. Write down these goals either on a whiteboard in your practice space or in a notebook. When goals are taken out of your head and put into physical reality where you can actually see them written down, it helps to hold you accountable and stay motivated toward achieving them. People who study this kind of stuff have come up with an acronym. And who doesn't love a good acronym? The SMART goal. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Timely. What do those steps mean, and how do we apply them to practicing the saxophone? Let's go through the steps. Specific goals have a desired outcome that is clearly understood. Goals like, I want to be a better sax player, or I want to learn to play jazz are admirable, but they're not really specific, because of course we all want to be better sax players, but how do we assess that goal? A more specific goal would be, I want to memorize the major scales in two octaves in all 12 keys. That is specific. You need to have a measurable objective so that you can track your progress. So let's drill down on our previous goal. How do we make that goal a measurable one? You could say, I want to be able to play the major scales from memory in all 12 keys in eighth notes, quavers, at a minimum of 80 beats per minute. That is measurable. All of these practice principles apply no matter what style of music you want to play. Jazz, pop, classical, funk, whatever you're into. And if you want to improve in that style or even learn a new style, come and check out Sax School Online. We have thousands of lessons in all styles, so come and join us. Just click the link below. There's a 14-day free trial running right now. <laughs> Goals need to be realistic in order to maintain the enthusiasm to try to achieve them. So setting lofty goals is good, but you may want to break them down into smaller bite-sized chunks. So let's drill down more and make that goal more realistic and achievable. I will practice major scales in four keys per day for 20 minutes. Now this is certainly attainable. <laughs> Don't set goals just as an exercise for something to do. Think about what's important in your development as a musician at this time and why this particular task is relevant to your improvement. I want to be comfortable in all keys, so being able to play major scales in 12 keys is essential. <laughs> all goals should have a deadline. A goal without a deadline doesn't do very much. How can you identify success or failure? 
This is why SMART goals have a final date. Let's say I want to memorize major scales in eighth notes at a minimum of 80 beats per minute in 12 keys within four months. Now that is a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant goal with a deadline. Now, this doesn't mean that after four months you've failed if you haven't achieved this goal. It just means that you can evaluate how far you've come, and then you can set new goals. And then the process continues. Your practice routine should be made up of several different goals like this in different areas of your practice. And this leads us to organizing. Having a structure for your practice session will save you the what should I work on question, which has certainly had me spinning my wheels on more than one occasion. Now you can use one of the practice plans we have in SAC school, or you can just remember the three T's and divide your practice into these three main elements. Tone. Tone would consist of long tones, overtones, or playing on just the mouthpiece. All important exercises to strengthen your embouchure and improve your intonation and sound, with the added benefit of really annoying your neighbors. Tone practice should be about 20% of your practice time. So if you practice an hour, 12 minutes would be tone exercises. Now a note about using a tuner. Playing in tune is something we all should strive for, but some people spend a little too much time obsessed with that green smiley face on the tonal energy tuner. A great app, by the way. But learning to play in tune is a lifelong pursuit, and intonation is not just an abstract thing. It's about learning to play in tune with other musicians. And the best use of your practice time for intonation is using a drone or the tone generator feature of the TE Tuner to practice matching pitch. If you're interested in digging deeper with the TE Tuner, we have an extensive video tutorial inside SAC School with some really useful exercises to help you get the most out of the app. You can click on the link below to check out the 14-day free trial. The next T is technique. Technical exercises can be scales, arpeggios, or patterns of any kind. There are all types of exercises to improve your technique. We have a large collection of them inside SAC School, and they all have one thing in common. Technical exercises should be practiced slowly using a metronome. Aim for accuracy, not speed. Tunes are working on learning or memorizing songs for gigs, memorizing standard tunes to increase your repertoire, or maybe working on chord progressions. The tunes heading also encompasses another element that also coincidentally starts with T, transcription. Now this is an important one, and it should almost have its own heading, but check this out. A great way to learn a tune is with transcription. Now, by transcription, I mean learning from a recording, either writing it down, or even better, learning it by ear and committing it to memory without writing it down. This is a great way to learn a tune or a horn part off of a record, and it helps improve your ear and your memory. Now, perhaps you've never done any transcription before, and it's a little intimidating. Well, have you ever heard the joke, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. You don't need to start out transcribing a whole song or an entire solo. You can start with one measure or a short phrase. It might take a while, but you work it out bite by bite and you'll get there. Transcription is a skill that takes time to develop, but it is an invaluable skill. Another way transcription helps you learn tunes is by transcribing a recorded solo by one of the greats over a chord progression of a tune you're learning. So you're learning the blues progression. Well, there are thousands of recordings of great musicians, not just saxophonists, improvising over the blues. Some solos are really complex, but a lot of them are just simple, grooving solos, and that is a great place to start. And there are all kinds of apps that can slow down audio without affecting the pitch. So find a solo you like and go to town. For me, one of the best parts of transcribing is that it's instant gratification. It's a great feeling to finish a practice session and have learned even four new measures of a tune or a solo, and that motivates you to do more the next day. Oh, by the way, elephant tastes a lot like chicken. So you've got tone for 20%, technique 40%, tunes and transcription 40%. That brings us to... 100%. Now, after you've worked on these areas, have some fun. 
Spend some time playing whatever you feel like. Something new, something you're already good at. Play anything you want. Don't forget what all of this is about. Enjoying playing the saxophone. So take some time and just play. In addition to keeping track of your goals and where you want to go in the future, it's also useful to keep a record of what you're currently working on and tracking your progress. Call it a practice journal, a log, a diary, or a notebook. You can use music paper, notebook paper, print out a spreadsheet, or we even have a practice planner that you can download inside SAC School. There are even apps made specifically to document your progress. I like to use one called Modacity, but the point is to keep a record. It can be as simple as writing down the exercise, the date you began working on it, the tempo, and how long you spent on it during that session. You can also notate what problems you've had, what needs improvement on that exercise. There's no standard template for a practice notebook. Whatever works for you is fine. The idea is to keep a record. Here's a look at a couple of pages of the practice notebooks of one of the greatest saxophonists ever, Michael Brecker. The notebooks were recently re-engraved and published into this. And it's a very insightful look into the practice habits and development of an incredible musician. And I would encourage you to check it out for some ideas on how you can keep track of your development and maybe even some inspiration on what you should work on. Being able to see your progress written down will really help to keep you motivated. And years from now, when you become a famous saxophonist, music historians will have documentation of your development. While we're on the subject of documenting, listening critically to your own playing is essential to improving. The best way to do this is by recording yourself, either on audio or video. Since most people have access to a smartphone, there's not much excuse not to be recording your practice sessions all the time. Recording yourself allows you to hear yourself as others hear you. When we're practicing and in the heat of battle, focusing on the music and everything else that it takes to play the sax, you don't really hear or see what's going on. And just like when you hear your voice recorded, it can be a bit surprising, even maybe a little cringeworthy. But it's invaluable in improving all aspects of your playing. You can look at your finger position, your posture, you can listen to your tone, your articulation, and your technical accuracy. It really helps to put your playing under a microscope, which is going to help you improve much faster. You don't have to record a whole practice session, just a five or ten minute block a couple times a week. Then set aside some time to really listen to it. You can even take notes. What sounds good? What needs improvement? There are a couple of other benefits when it comes to recording yourself, especially with video recording. The more you record yourself, the more comfortable you'll get. Here in SAC School, we have something called a spotlight session where our members record themselves playing a piece and then our tutors view it and they give feedback. I hear from lots of members saying they wish they could submit something for some help, but they just aren't comfortable videotaping themselves. They get nervous and they don't feel like they're playing as well as they do normally. Well, if you get in the habit of recording yourself a couple times a week, just for yourself, you'll get comfortable with seeing and hearing yourself on video. And it won't be such a big deal. And maybe you'll feel better about sending in a video to get some help. Also, videotaping can be part of one of your long-term goals. Set up the goal of recording yourself playing through an entire piece and then sharing it on YouTube or Facebook or in the SAC School community. You could record yourself playing a piece once a month and post it on Facebook. At the end of the year, you could look back and you'll have an excellent documentation of your improvement. Remember, being able to track your progress is going to keep you motivated, and that will keep you practicing. Well, hopefully these tips will help you get organized and stay motivated with your practicing. If you want to dig a bit deeper and check out the full Practice Master class, as well as all of our other lessons, you can click on the link below to check out our 14-day free trial, which is running right now. Take care, keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next lesson. Mm-hmm.